Hello everyone. My name is Sung Hyap Kim, professor of radiology and urology, Seoul National University Hospital. In this session, I would like to talk how we can use ultrasound in evaluation of renal parenchymal diseases. I would like to talk on grayscale ultrasound first, then Doppler ultrasound, and then other ultrasound techniques including elastography. With grayscale ultrasound, we measure kidney size, usually maximum longitudinal length, and we evaluate renal cortical echogenicity and cortical medullary differentiation. Renal length depends on height, weight, and body mass index, but the length measured on ultrasound is usually within the range of 9 to 13 centimeters. Renal cortical echogenicity is usually slightly lower than liver echogenicity on the right side and the splenic echogenicity on the left side. And the renal medulla has slightly lower echogenicity than renal cortex and we call it preserved cortical medullary differentiation. If you look at grayscale ultrasound images of three different kidneys, First, renal cortical echo is lower than liver echo, second, the same as liver echo, and the third, cortical echo is higher than liver echo. This left side is clearly normal echo, this right side is clearly abnormal, but in this middle image, it is difficult to say whether cortical echo is normal or abnormal. This old but important paper well shows the difference of sensitivity specificity and positive predictive value when you consider cases with same echogenicity of renal cortex and liver as normal or abnormal. We consider renal cortical echo abnormal only when it is higher than liver echo since with this criterion we may have higher specificity and higher positive predictive value. These three different kidneys have normal cortical echogenicity with preserved cortical medullary differentiation. However, we need to keep in mind that if liver echogenicity is abnormally high in such conditions as fatty liver, it may be difficult to determine normal or abnormal renal cortical echogenicity by comparing with liver echo. Also, we should understand that renal cortical echo in normal neonate is different. Because of structural immaturity, renal cortical echo in neonate is higher and renal medulla is prominent and hypoechoic like this case. Renal parenchymal disease is also called medical renal disease and is usually diffuse and bilateral. This is a case of diffuse proliferative lupus nephropathy showing diffusely abnormal renal cortical echogenicity. Renal parenchymal disease may be categorized mainly into two types, glomerular and tubular interstitial diseases. It is known that hyperechogenicity of renal parenchyma are correlated more with tubular interstitial changes than glomerular changes. However, in practice, it is difficult to, to differentiate those two types of renal parenchymal diseases on the basis of changes of renal parenchymal echogenicity. Here are two examples of acute renal parenchymal disease. On left side, lupus nephritis, kidney is swollen and cortical echo is similar to or slightly lower than liver echo and there is a small amount of ascites beneath the liver. Right side, acute tubular interstitial nephritis, kidney is swollen, cortical echo is lower than liver echo, and cortical medullary differentiation is indistinct. Here are other examples of acute parenchymal disease. Upper one is a case we saw in last slide, acute tubular interstitial nephritis. And lower one is a case of HS purpura, with nephritis. In the lower case, both kidneys are swollen 
and renal cortical echo is elevated with preserved cortical medullary differentiation. So we may say that in acute renal parenchymal disease, kidneys are swollen with various changes of parenchymal echogenicity. Chronic renal parenchymal diseases show shrunken kidney with lobulated outer margin, parenchymal thinning, elevated cortical echo, obliterated cortical medullary differentiation, and often accompanies acquired cysts. Sometimes when kidney is shrunken due to chronic renal parenchymal disease, perirenal fat appears hypoechoic and may mimic fluid collection in perirenal space like this case. Doppler phenomenon was first found by Austrian physicist Johann Christian Doppler in 1842 and now it became the basic component of ultrasound technique. Doppler ultrasound is an easy and non-invasive technique and color or power Doppler ultrasound shows general changes of renal blood flow of the kidney and spectral Doppler analysis may provide objective information of renal hemodynamic changes. There are many Doppler indexes that can be used in analyzing renal Doppler spectra as you see in this list, but most commonly used index in renal Doppler ultrasound is resistive index, which is peak systolic velocity minus endodiastric velocity divided by peak systolic velocity. That index well reflects the resistance of renal parenchyma against renal arterial inflow. Among other indexes, renal aortic ratio, acceleration time, and acceleration index are used in diagnosis of renal artery stenosis. Intrarenal arterial Doppler spectra are obtained from interlobar artery level. Registry index is usually lower than 0.65 and seldom exceeds 0.7. So, usually 0.7 is considered as upper normal limit of registry index of interlobar artery of the kidney. As you see in this graph, we need to know that normal registry index of the kidney is different according to age. It is lowest in young adults and is slightly higher in children and old adults. It is known that changes of renal register index depends on the types of pathologic changes of renal parenchyma. Register index is usually elevated when there are dominant tubular interstitial changes, but it usually remains normal when glomerular changes are dominant. This is a paper that showed this difference and in their 72 biopsy proven cases of renal parenchymal diseases, average registered index was 0.61 in predominantly glomerular diseases and 0.76 in predominantly tubular interstitial diseases. One renal parenchymal disease where Doppler ultrasound may play an important role is diabetic nephropathy. The main pathologic findings of diabetic nephropathy are diffuse glomerulosclerosis and arteriolosclerosis that may increase renal vascular resistance as the disease progresses. It is known that the kidneys with diabetic nephropathy are enlarged in early phase of the disease and so they may appear quite normal even when the disease is quite advanced. Here are kidneys in two different patients with diabetic nephropathy, and both kidneys look quite normal at grayscale ultrasound. But if you see these Doppler spectra, these two kidneys are very different. This left-sided kidney has normal appearance and also normal Doppler findings with normal register index around 0.6, while this right-sided normal-looking kidney at grayscale ultrasound shows clearly abnormal Doppler finding with markedly elevated register index of 1.0. This is a graph in our study and this is a similar graph in another study showing same relation between creatinine clearance and register index. 
so spectral Doppler ultrasound will be a useful technique to evaluate the severity of diabetic nephropathy. This is a 50-year-old man with diabetes for 30 years. Kidney is enlarged on right side with a length about 14 cm and normal sized left kidney with 12 cm length with cortical scars. Doppler ultrasound well shows elevated register index higher than 0.8 on both sides, indicating presence of diabetic nephropathy. This is a 58-year-old man with diabetes for 10 years. Renal size is normal on both sides, around 10 cm in length, but Doppler ultrasound shows a slightly decreased diastolic flow with resistive index around 0.75. Same patient after one year, still both kidneys appear normal at grayscale ultrasound, but Doppler ultrasound shows a strikingly different flow pattern no diastric flow and resistive index of 1.0. Now this patient has markedly progressed diabetic nephropathy during one year interval. Again, one year before and one year after in the same patient with diabetes. Here are some other cases of renal parenchymal diseases that show abnormal Doppler spectral findings. This is a 63-year-old man with acute tubular interstitial nephritis. Both kidneys are swollen with relatively preserved renal parenchymal echo. Doppler ultrasound shows slightly decreased diastric flow with resistive index of 0.76 and 0.78. Here is a 67-year-old woman with multiple myeloma with chronic renal failure. Grayscale ultrasound shows a small kidney smaller than 9 cm length and markedly increased renal cortical echo. Doppler ultrasound shows markedly decreased diastolic flow with resistive index 0.87 and 0.85. Elastorapy may be used to evaluate renal parenchymal diseases and this article will describe this potential. This is an example article of kidney elastography measuring shear wave velocity in normal volunteers group by age and diabetic nephropathy group by stage. This is an animal study done by our group comparing degree of fibrosis and tissue stiffness measured by shear wave elastography. I would like to finish this talk by mentioning that Grayscale and Doppler ultrasound findings together provide valuable information in renal parenchymal disease and the sure wave elastography has a potential for clinical use.